Hello, y'all. We are back for another exciting week of reading through the Messianic Jewish Family Bible, Tree of Life version TLV. And as I open this Bible this week, I can see how much traction we have had um, with going through the Bible and where we are. Um, we, we, we actually covered quite a bit. Um, we have covered the entire Torah. We have covered the first book of the Nevim or the Prophets. And that was Joshua. We ended Joshua last week. And now we are going to begin the book of Judges. And this week we're going to do the introduction and then chapters 1 through 10. And then next week we're going to finish up the book of Judges um, with chapters 11 through 21. And I'm, we're going to talk about the book of Judges um, in, in just a moment. Um, the one thing that I wanted to, to, to mention here, if you are listening to these videos and there's been quite a few videos that that I have put out and you are blessed I have always forgotten to ask for subscribers and and with the new changes with YouTube and actually um having to actually show your 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 vital to, to YouTube um I'm going to ask that if you are being blessed by this please subscribe and go ahead and hit the notifications cuz you will get an early notification as to when I upload these videos. So you'll get to listen to them earlier than when I post them onto Facebook. I just never thought about talking about those things because I never meant for this to be even monetized. I meant for this to be a teaching mode, but at the end of the year, there was some things that changed and I had to um, specify as some of you have listened to my compliancy video, I had to specify that this is a teaching channel and it's a biblical channel. So, um, but anyway, I just figured I will, I will mention that. And I guess I got to get used to mentioning that. So if you're being blessed by these videos, please subscribe, um, and go ahead and hit notifications. So you're notified of further, um, further videos that I might upload. So now that I got that out of the way, I, I we're going to actually open this with prayer because I want to invite the Holy Spirit into this teaching for this week. And I want to dive right into what we are going to be reading in Judges Introduction and Chapters 1 through 10. Father God, thank you. Thank you for another week of being able to come together to learn your word, um, to learn, you know, how you affected these people that that were your people in this bible um and how you raised them up to to take care of benaiah israel how you you led them to lead the people and to judge the people and to keep them from falling astray and to deliver them at times that they did fall astray you always raised up a judge um during this time frame and and we're going to get to see all of that as we read through this, how your mighty hand was on your people, how your mighty hand led your people, delivered your people when they actually fell away from you and were not actually um, doing what they needed to be doing to give you praise, honor, and glory. And we, we learn from these lessons um, that were um, that the mistakes of Benai Israel made. So we may not make those same mistakes, that we may stay focused on the things that you want us to be focused on and not fall prey to the deceptions of the world that we live in today that are very deceptive. And, and a lot of it is idolatry, you know, idolizing celebrities, idolizing money, idolizing TV programs and what have you. People make idols out of so many things. And and we can look at some of those things and we can look at what historically happened uh, to Benaiah Israel when they fell to these things and, and how then um, that compares to today and how we need so much to be turning to you and, and, and repenting of our sins as a nation, as a world, not just a nation, because the world actually needs to be turning to you, Father God. And we thank you in the mighty name of Yeshua. Amen. Amen and amen. Okay, I'm getting a little tongue-tied already. It's, it's kind of later in the evening as I'm doing this um, recording, so bear with me. I just, I, as always, want to get uh, a little bit ahead with my recordings. Um, so 
we are looking at the book of Judges. And I'm going to start reading the introduction. The Hebrew shoftim is a plural word that means judges. Shoftim comes from the root verb shapat, and that's spelled S-H-A-P-A-T, which means govern or rule. The book of Judges derives its name from the judges that led the people of Israel before they had a king. So this is all the precursor to um, Benai Israel actually demanding that they wanted to be like the rest of the nations and wanting to have a king. They did not have a king at this time. Their leader was God, um, but they needed judges to actually um, to, to lead them um, after Joshua had passed away. The text of scripture does not indicate who, who authored the book of Judges. However, the Talmud ascribes its authorship to the prophet Samuel. The book covers the time in Israel's history from Joshua's death to the rise of the monarchy, a period of 325 years from approximately 1380 to 1050 BC. Although the children of Israel had conquered and occupied most of the land of Canaan, the individual tribes had not taken full possession of their allotted territories, which allowed heathen nations to remain in the land. If you remember to prior prior weeks, God warned them if they did not drive out all, all the inhabitants, they would be a thorn to Benaiah Israel and, and cause all kinds of problems. And as, as we're going to see, they certainly do. These nations eventually became a snare to the children of Israel who conceded to following their pagan ways. As a result, the Hebrews were punished for their idolatry. A pattern of apostasy, oppression by the heathens, repentance and deliverance by God through raising up a, a judge to deliver the people is a recurring one in the book of Judges. This is kind of a theme for the book of Judges. Covenant is another important theme in the book. God's desire for Israel is that they would walk in a loving relationship with him and him alone. In Judges 2, God reminds the people of Israel that he will not break his covenant with him, with them and that he has asked them not to, to, not to make a covenant with any of the surrounding nations. Israel, however, disobeyed his command. Whenever the children of Israel forsook, their covenant relationship with God, he turned them over to their enemies so that they may repent and turn back to him. Every time Israel cried out and repented, God raised up a judge to deliver them from their enemies because of his covenant relationship with this nation. An approximate summary for the book of Judges is found in chapter 17 and repeated in chapter 21. In those days, there was no king in Israel. Every man did what was right in his own eyes. And that's in, in chapter 17, verse 6. The children of Israel did not go astray because they did not have an earthly king. They went astray because they rejected their heavenly king. In Leviticus 26, God tells the people of Israel that if they walk in his statutes and keep his mitzvot or commandments, he would walk among them and be their God, and they would be his people. God's desire has always been for its intimacy with his people. In order to deliver them from their enemies, God has raised up a just judge, Messiah Yeshua. According to Psalm 2, all those who accept his rule will be delivered, but the nations that reject his rule will suffer the negative consequences. So there we have a little bit of a type and shadow there when we're talking about this, because yes, Messiah Yeshua is the only way that um, we will be delivered from everything. So that is a little bit of the introduction and I'm going to I'm going to do a really quick recapping, too, and um, give you a, a briefing on what we're going to encounter in this book. Many people suggest that the author for Judges was anonymous, but there is much more agreement that Samuel, again, was the author of the book of Judges. And we're going to find out who Samuel was, too, as we continue to read through through the, the, the Bible. Samuel was a writer 
and a prophet. And in 1 Samuel, which we haven't gotten to yet, um, chapter 10, 25, then Samuel told the people the manner of the kingdom and wrote it in a book and laid it up before the Lord. So this indicates that he was writing um, things. And Samuel sent all the people away, every man to his house. The Talmud is a collection of writings of the Jewish religion, religious and civil laws. Uh, and this gives Samuel the credit as being the author for the book of Judges. So I had mentioned the Talmud earlier, and that's exactly what the Talmud is. It's a collection of writings of the Jewish religious and civil laws. The book of Judges was written, again, around 1500 to 1000 BC. The book of Judges is named from its contents every time Israel sinned against God and repented. So God raised up a judge then to deliver them. There, there is this recurring theme throughout the period of the judges, that, and that was apostasy, which means falling away from God. And another theme is failure through compromise. In those days, there was no king in Israel, but every man did that was, did that which was right in his own eyes. And that's in Judges 17.6. And it's also a theme in the book of Judges, and this sums up the attitude and behavior of Israel in those days. The recurring theme is apostasy, oppression, repentance, and deliverance. Now, I want to mention, though, from the time of Joshua's death to the time of the the, the monarchy um, is a period of 325 years, as I mentioned earlier, and that covers, um, from, was it 1380 to 1050 B.C.? And BC, of course, is before Christ. So it covers that time frame, but it's thought to have been written um, from 1500 to 1000 BC for, in, in, during that time period. So things, you know, notes might have been being kept somewhere. Um, and then it was all put together in the scroll form that, you know, it, it had been been done. Okay, it was a time of transition when the scattered tribes were held together only by their common faith. Loyalty to God meant a strong united nation, while turning from God and worshiping other gods meant weakness and division, along with oppression and punishment. Judges was written sometime during the early part of the monarchy, uh, following Saul's coronation, but preceding David's conquest in Jerusalem. The book of Judges covers a chaotic period of time in Israel's history. Um, and I had mentioned that history, again, as being 1350 to 1050 BC. Under Joshua's leadership, Israel occupied a large part of the promised land, but large areas remained to be possessed by the individual tribes. By continually doing evil and disobeying God, Israel broke their covenant with God, and because of their sins, the Lord delivered them into the hands of their enemies. And each time the people cried out in repentance, God would faithful, faithfully give them a judge or a deliverer to deliver them. The judge that the Lord would raise up would be anointed with the Holy Spirit and were military and civil leaders. The, the book of Judges shows the faithfulness of the Lord to his covenant. In Judges 1, 1 through 3, 6 is the prologue and it explains how this period came about. There was a total of 13 judges, and of the 13, six of them stand out because this book of the Bible is based on six basic apostasies of Israel. And we see six successive apostasies, uh, punishment or servitude, and these were brought all brought about by God and six judges or deliverers. The main narrative of the book of Judges is from chapter 3, verse Five to chapter 13, verse 31. Judges 3, 5, 8 is the sin of apostasy resulting in servitude to the king of Mesopotamia for eight years. The deliverer or judge is Othniel um, in Judges 3, 9 to 11. And then we have Judges 3, 12 to 14 is the sin of apostasy resulting in servitude to the king of Moab for 18 years. And the deliverer or judges in Judges 3, 15 to 30, and Shamgar in Judges 3, 31. The third one is Judges 4, 1 to 3. 
is the sin of apostasy resulting in servitude to the king of Canaan for 20 years and the deliverer or judge is Deborah in Judges 4, 4 to 5, I'm sorry, 4 verses 4 to Judges 5 verse 31 and Barak also is, is in that story. Um, 4, Judges 6, 1 to 10 is the sin of apostasy resulting in servitude to the Midianites for seven years and their deliverer there is Gideon and that's found in Judges 6, 11 to 8 verses 35. We're going to read about all of this tonight. And Judges 10 um, verses 6 to 18 is the sin of apostasy resulting in servitude to the Philistines for 18 years. The deliverer judge is Japheth and that is in Judges 11 verse 1 to 12 verse 7. And then Judges 13 verse 1 is the sin of apostasy resulting in servitude to the Philistines for 40 years this time. And the deliverer or the judge is Samson in Judges 13 verse 2 to 16 verse 31. The book of Judges is divided into three parts, the prologue, the the main narrative, and the epilogue. The first part of the prologue describes Israel's incomplete conquest of Canaan and the Lord's rebuke for Israel's unfaithfulness to the covenant. The second part of the prologue shows Israel's rebellious ways during the first centuries in the promised land and shows how the Lord dealt with it. There was a recurring cycle of apostasy, oppression, repentance, and deliverance. The main body of the book is from chapters 3, verse 1, through chapter 16, verse 31. And we're not going to get to all of this tonight, and we're going to certainly get to the rest of it next week. And it shows the recurring pattern of Israel's early history. The evil that Israel did in the sight of God was apostasy, and the Lord allowed enemies to arise and oppress them until they cried out in repentance. Then he would rise up a deliverer or judge, and they would would be empowered with his spirit. The major judges were Othniel, Ehud, Deborah, Gideon, Jephthah, and Samson. The minor judges were Shamgar, Tola, Jer, Ibzan, Elon, and Abdon. A 13th judge named Abimelech was a part of the Gideon story. The epilogue consists of two stories at the end of Judges, and the purpose of these stories is is to describe the religious and moral corruption that was present during this time of Israel's history, and it also showed the consequences of the apostasy and anarchy when there was no king in Israel. Judges is a time before there were kings in Israel. The writer writes about the nation's heroes and describes in detail six of the judges, Othniel, Ehud, Deborah, Deborah and Barak, are together, uh, Gideon, Jephthah, and Samson. These judges were not just legal advisors. They were men and women of action who delivered the nation from the enemy nations and became loyal and national leaders. The book of Judges shows the consequences of breaking covenant with God and worshiping idols. Sin separates us from God and God requires commitment from his people. Or there are negative consequences. Even with the negative consequences, when God's people repented and cried out, he brought deliverance to them. Today, we have seen Yeshua, or Jesus, as our ultimate deliverer. God also empowers us with his Holy Spirit to bring deliverance to others. And to recap, in the book of Judges, we see man's sinfulness, man's constant failure, and the constant mercy of God. And so that's the introduction, and we're going to come back with part two and begin chapter one of the book of Judges.